NBA Finals rematch. Makes it a little bit easier to wake up at 6 a.m. We're off to see Dracula today. Romania is a historically significant part of Eastern Europe, but no region demonstrates this quite like Transylvania. Transylvania is located in central Romania, and is home to a section of the Carpathian Mountains. Sydney and I took a day trip to explore the beautiful mountainscape, vibrant towns, and most especially, the castles. So today we ventured north about 77 miles north of Bucharest to the Carpathian Mountains to see Pelish Castle, which is right behind us. This was kind of like the summer retreat and hunting area for King Carol I, and we were actually able to go inside. It was a really stunning, breathtaking experience just seeing like all of the crazy architecture that's in there. It's also nice to be in the mountains. This is our first snowfall that we've seen of 2022 in crazy. London. In London and Bucharest we saw no snow. Now we're surrounded by snow. The castle is so picturesque. It's situated right at the foothills of these mountains, with snow-capped peaks in this dense forest. It's absolutely beautiful. And the whole surrounding area too, just so many sculptures, and I'm literally just taken away by this. Pelish Castle is a neo-renaissance masterpiece near the mountain town of Sinaia, Romania. King Carl I was moved by the beauty of the mountainous region and commissioned this royal estate to be built in 1872. The cost of the construction of this castle, in today's terms, is estimated around $120 million, although the Romanian crown paid mostly in gold. The design is an eclectic mix of European architecture. While the outside has distinctly German and Austrian characteristics, the inside varies completely from room to room. Everything from Italian masonry to Czech stonework to Hungarian carpentry to Polish engineering. There was even greeting rooms designed specifically for visitors from certain regions. King Carl I wanted Pelish Castle to be the pride of Romania, and visitors from all over Europe and the world still come to marvel at its beauty. main destination today which I've been mostly focused on when I've been researching but so far Pelish Castle has stolen the show I, I really wasn't I didn't know what to expect maybe but so far this has been one of the coolest things we've seen on the trip I am so surprised I didn't even know anything about this castle until today and it's just breathtaking this was an added castle to our main tour today so this is just an added bonus <laughs> so goodbye Pelish Castle we're leaving too soon but on we go on our Transylvanian adventure For our next stop, we headed west to the town of Bran to see one of Transylvania's oldest landmarks. Bran Castle is a medieval fortress set on a hill, overlooking the surrounding Carpathian landscape. These days, it is more commonly referred to as Dracula's Castle, as many believe it resembles the description of the castle in Bram Stoker's infamous novel, Dracula. 
We learn that Count Dracula was actually inspired by a real historical figure, Vlad III, ruler of Wallachia in the 1400s. His nickname, Vlad the Impaler, demonstrated his brutal fixation for impaling his enemies on stakes. Ironically, neither Bram Stoker nor Vlad the Impaler likely ever set foot in Bran Castle. The connection to Dracula is purely tourism-driven. However, we certainly felt transported to medieval Transylvania, walking through the Erie Fortress. Bran Castle also includes a collection of ancient artifacts and furniture from when it was a part-time residence of the Romanian royal family. Queen Marie of Romania was particularly fond of the castle, and was the main driving force behind the preservation of these artifacts. So we are now officially in the Transylvania region of Romania. This is our second castle of the day. This is Bran Castle, and we just finished up our tour. And this was pretty insane because this is actually Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula, the vampire that everyone knows from all of the movies and all the lore. It's actually based on Vlad the Impaler, who was a Romanian leader in the 1400s. And it's kind of funny to me because Dracula is supposed to be like really creepy and he's like this demon uh, vampire that made a deal with the devil and all these different things, but Vlad the Impaler himself was creepy enough. I mean, this guy He's was not a like, good guy, was he? <laughs> just the name should tell you enough, but this guy used to like to eat his meals with his victims impaled on a stake so he could watch them suffer while he enjoyed a meal. They're really leaning into the whole lore of Dracula and werewolves. There was a whole room dedicated to like that type of creepy mythology, and it's really even not true from this region. It's all just kind of hype from Bram Stoker's book, Dracula. And our tour guide said that tourism has been up just in the last six years because 
of Dracula. They joined the EU in 2007, as we mentioned, Romania did, and we are actually really lucky to do this tour with basically no one else. We had a group of like 18 people or so. They say usually the groups are like hundreds of people. You have to wait for hours even to get into the castle because the castle is not actually that big. And Pelish Castle was kind of the same thing. It's not the size of these castles that makes them impressive. It's just the locations where they're set on these mountains and just in general how they look. So the two castles we saw today are very different. This one behind us looks like a fortress. It was built over 800 years ago. It feels medieval, like it's from a different time. So yeah, the Pelish castle itself was a lot more like a palace. It was a lot more grandiose. It was meant for kings and queens. This was eventually occupied by kings and queens, but that's not how it started. Uh, there's just a lot of different history to this castle. So it was really cool to see two castles from completely different time periods that looked so different, but were impressive in their own way. And it was actually really cool driving up here too, because just coming up here, so when we're in Bucharest, you can't see the mountains. It's not like close to the mountain range at all. So we flew into Bucharest. We couldn't really see the mountains because we were flying in at night. Uh, we basically just been in Bucharest for a week and a half or so really haven't felt very mountainy and then we drive like an hour and a half out, out of the city and it feels like we're in Colorado or something a like totally it's so crazy. A totally different climate. And it's really amazing to see how a region can be so different in its geography. So next up we're going to the city of Brashoff to check that out and definitely get some food because we're really hungry. Situated in the mountains, Brashoff feels like something you would see in Austria or Switzerland. Beautiful architecture, pedestrian walkways, and lookout points all around the surrounding foothills. We were happy to get a chance to see a different aspect of the country. Brashov and Bucharest could not have been more different from one another. We also had to end the day with some traditional Romanian food. I went for the tripe soup again, and Sydney got her favorite bean soup in a bread bowl, a Romanian staple. Then we shared the roasted pork knuckle. I still have trouble comprehending how something can be so delicious, perfectly smoky and tender. The only way to cap off a perfect Romanian meal is with our absolute favorite dessert, papanash. Before heading back to Bucharest, we went on a quick walking tour around Brashov. The medieval influence was truly stunning. We wish we had more time, but it's definitely been added to our list of places to return to. 